There you go. A little bit of all you need is love, just enough to get them down the aisle, you know, <laughs> uh, which is all you need to do. Just never underestimate the power of just playing a familiar song for folks. Um, it is uh, uh, quite enjoyable for everybody just to kind of play the play the melody sometimes. Um, I'm I burned my hand yesterday, so as I was. Uh, uh, doing some things in the kitchen. So I've got one little piece of my hand that is, is really, ah, killing me. But it's doing, it's, I'm so thankful. Many of you guys had asked about the, the soreness in my hand, which we are now a year out of the soreness in my hand. And it is still there, but it is much better, and it doesn't hardly bother. I've got a little bit of stiffness there, but it doesn't really bother me as much as it, it did. So thankfully, that is, that is getting better. All right, uh, a couple of things uh, before we get into our strumming stuff. We've got our fall fingerstyle retreat coming up this week, which everybody's starting to come in for, and it is going to be hilarious fun. Um, those of you that aren't here, you're going to miss it. This is going to be one of the big, <laughs> one of the great ones. Sorry, uh, we still got one spot left. Hey, if you're a girl, we got one spot left uh, in uh, in one of the uh, dorm rooms for the ladies. So. Uh, but other than that, we are filled up and have been filled, filled for a long time. So, All right, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about um, strumming. All right, strumming's not something that we've delved into quite a bit, but a lot of folks, it, it doesn't come naturally for them. Uh, it didn't really come naturally for me. Nobody taught me strumming, so this is kind of just stuff I've, I've learned along the way. So uh, strumming, first thing is you want to get a pick when you're strumming, a a lighter pick, medium to light on the end of the spectrum, tends to do better for strumming than a big, old, hard, heavy pick. That's going to be very clunky when you're strumming with to do that. So you want, you want a pick that's a little bit, uh, little bit more medium and light in, in its response. Now, I use these little Jim Dunlops, uh, these little nylon uh, teardrop ones that are, what is this? This is a 73. Sometimes I'll have an 88. To, uh, this is the lighter one. I, I rarely will go down to a 60 because that's almost too light for me. I like a little bit of strength in it. But you'll find that the lightness of your pick will help as you're strumming so that you're not fighting against all your strings all night long. If I had a big old jazz one millimeter pick and I'm you know playing rhythm bluegrass all night long, my hand would fall off Okay, because you're just fighting against it so much. So it, it'll just make life easier if you have a little bit of a pick with a little bit of flexibility. Now, how do you grip it when you're doing a lot of strumming? Well, I want to grip it strong, but flexible. Okay, so it's not loose; it's flexible because I'm doing a lot of things with this. So if I'm going to strum, so I'm just going to strum here for a little bit. So you need a little bit of flexibility in your grip in how it's going, but I can't loose my grip. Does that make sense? So it needs to be able to move around like that, but I can't grip it lightly or it sounds like this. There's just no power in it. So once I grip a little bit firmer on the pick, I'm able to get a little bit more uh, definition with it. Um, let me see if I have a hard pick and you could hear the difference. Well, this one's a little harder. So I'm going to play the same lick and this is a harder pick. Okay, this is about a 88, so it's a little bit stiffer. Um, here is a Jazz pick. Oh, let's do this one. It's about a one millimeter. So it's still a pleasant sound. It's just fighting me a whole lot more uh, as I'm playing it. Okay, So you can still do what you need to do. It's just going to make you work a whole lot more harder. We had a question from our studio audience. I didn't know if I could. That's all right. I will take a question from our studio audience. 
Okay. If you're doing picking, wood grain picking, things like that, would that entail a harder pick at that point? Right. The question was, because I know some of you can't hear, the, um, if you're doing a lot of fast picking, stuff like this, then yes, I do want one of these little bluegrass uh, numbers that doesn't have a lot of sharp points in it, and I can do really quick maneuvers on it when I'm doing a lot of single note stuff. But if I'm the rhythm guy and I'm just strumming all night long, then a thicker pick, or excuse me, a thinner pick is going to be a little bit easier for me to do what I need to do. Okay, so it just depends on kind of your function. Um, now, the next thing I have on my list is when you're strumming, you're basically turning your instrument from a harmonic instrument with chords and notes and things like that. We're turning it into a percussion instrument. Okay, so a good way to practice this at home is just to mute all the strings. So I just muted all my strings down here. So I'm not worried about the chords or anything like that. I'm just going to try and get this flow happening. One, two, three. So you can tell some, some notes are more accented, some notes are softer. So there's not an evenness about it. If there was, then there would be no, um, it, would be, it would be pretty one-dimensional in your strumming. And it gets kind of annoying when some guys play that way. It's just kind of, ah, you need that dynamic variation. So some notes are stronger. So there I'm doing a grouping of four, but the first one is really loud. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now, one of the most important things is to start getting into the flow of it, to internalize the beat. A very tricky thing if you're not used to doing that. Um, what do I mean by that? You can play with a metronome. You can play with a drum machine, and that helps as well. But really, what you're, all of that is going for is you want to build a, an internal sense of time where I can have a sense of time, here's a tempo, okay, and I'm, I'm feeling it, okay, and now, now I've got it, it's inside of me, and now once it's inside of me, then I can make it come out, I can, I can do a little groove, whatever, I can, I can dance, I can move, I've got the beat, it's inside of here, okay. So it's still going. I, I stopped doing it, but I still have it. Still, still I've got it. So then now I'm going to start strumming. So if I just go, these would be just the downbeats. And this is a good way to start. Just mute your strings. Don't worry about doing chords. One, one problem at a time. OK, now I'm going to do the up strums with it. Do you hear the downs and ups are just different? They just sound different. Think about it. These are hitting mostly the lower strings. These are hitting mostly the upper strings. So just naturally, it's different. So when I add a chord to it, so it's not, they're not all the same. A lot of folks, that's one of the first things that they, they kind of get confused on, is there's a natural loping to it, jompa, 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 sort of a thing. And then you add other rhythms to it. So I can emphasize an upstrum. Let's see. Down, up. So I'm emphasizing an upstream, upstrum. So I can do that as well. And all these little nuances is what makes the groove work when you're strumming. Okay, Keith Bates is asking, what material do I want in a pick for strumming? Well, I like the nylon. Now you can get plastic ones. Like here's a little plastic pick. These are these are fine too. These are real cheap. You can see them everywhere. Put your little logo on it and all that sort of stuff are a plastic, plastic pick. And I use them sometimes too. The thing is, is in the heat of battle, when you're really strumming hard, especially if they're thin, they're going to tear. Okay, They're just going to start to rip. Um, you'll get a little 
you know, a little gash in it. And next thing you know, it's, it's starting to tear. And next thing you know, you go down for a good big strum and your pick gets caught and your strings break and, you know, you lose your big chance to be discovered. So we don't want that. So um, nylon pick, well, I don't think I've ever seen a nylon pick tear. They just won't tear. Now, they'll just get grooves in them, and, but they're generally a whole lot um, tougher. Than, than those, and, but they're still flexible. So I like the Jim Dunlop, the, uh, their little teardrop nylon ones here. Uh, that's what I like for that. Okay, so now that we've felt the flow of it, now it's a good idea when you're strumming to work with a metronome or a drum machine or something like that to where I'm taking that beat and I'm just making it work. And if you're not used to strumming, I would just be here for a while. Just practice it like your percussion instrument. Listen to what I'm doing. So every now and then I'll have this very emphasized downbeat. Down. Sorry. I had to put my downbeat on two and four, right? So it's hip. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Can you still hear it? There's that two and four. Go, 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 go emphasizing different parts of the beat, okay? Um, all right. All right. Let's go through a couple of different progressions, okay? So that one I was doing there was just a G to an E minor to a C to a D. A G, an E minor, a C, and a D, okay? About as basic as you could get. So if I started out just doing the down strums, Let's do whole notes. Two, two, three, two, four. Two, two, three, two, four. So even though there's not much going on, I'm not playing a whole lot, I've still got the tempo. There's no doubt of where the tempo's at. Now what if I did half notes? These are whole notes here. Two, three, four. One, two, now I'm going to do half notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. All these are down strums. My, my hand, what is my hand doing over here? Okay, well, he's, his, his deal is I could go in an eighth note pattern or I could go in a sixteenth note pattern. Okay, now first of all, he's really relaxed. Okay. You ever seen a guy, you ever seen a guy like with a whip, okay? A guy that's doing a, a whip, okay? The, the motion for the whip doesn't come from here. It starts way back here and just kind of whabangs through, through your, it comes through the wrist and that makes it, that makes, if you try and just do a whip and do this, it doesn't work, right? You've got to get the whole motion. Same thing with strumming, same thing with strumming. I can't just go. doesn't work. I've got to get this like a like a, a wheel on a train, okay? It's always going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. If I'm doing an eighth, I'm going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. This is an eighth note pattern. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, so a sixteenth note pattern would divide this twice more. So I'll go into a sixteenth note pattern. One two three four. 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 One two. I can't count that fast. Eighth note. 
16th note. Can you hear the difference? Okay, so there's definitely much more going on in the 16th note. And I can, I can create a much more of a sense of a grid underneath a, a, the music if I'm using a 16th note bass pattern. What the difference is happening in my hand is my hand is going instead of down, up, 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 down. It's doing this, okay? The, again, the motion is starting back here, and it's just coming out through my hand. It, your hand is relaxed, okay? It's like if you ever been in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, you're washing your hands and you're kind of flicking the water off of your hands. That's the motion. Your hand is loose. You're not like this. If, if it's like this, you're going to die an early death because <laughs> it's just too m tense. You're too tense. Lighten up, man. It's just guitar, okay? <laughs> you want to you wanna relax that wrist, okay? Relax that wrist. I'm still holding my pick. I've still got a firm grip on my pick, which is a tough little skill. Let's talk about that for a second. If I have, I wish I had a pencil here, but I, we'll just have to do it with this. If I have, if, it's a good practice to grip something and then move really fast. I can't do it with that. That's too wide. Um, to where you're holding a pencil. Practice it with a pencil or something. Okay? You're holding it, and then you're moving, but you're moving your hand, flipping it back and forth. That's a good practice for that. Okay? It'll help you get used to the motion. So if I actually was, if I was drawing, I'm actually making a circular motion. If you think there was a pencil here, it would be making kind of an oval, a circle, like you're stirring something at the stove. Okay? That's the motion. Okay? That's the motion. Now I put my ping. Hey, I'm not playing very much. You still know where the table is. Okay, so a 16th note based strum will allow you to get more subdivisions in there so you can define the tempo better. But it doesn't mean that you have to be playing all of those. That's obnoxious. That's a good way to get yourself kicked out of your, uh, out of your jam group is to just be the guy that's, wow, lighten up a little bit, okay? Um, uh, Larry Sixstring is saying, do you recommend counting when strumming? Yes, you count with everything. You count with everything. I recommend counting with strumming, counting with walking, counting with talking. Always you have that beat going, okay? Do you have it? It's still there. A good way to practice this, we've talked about this analogy before, is to, on your, as you're driving down the road, you're tapping on your, on your, on your dashboard or on your, on your steering wheel to the radio. Turn the radio off. Keep tapping and then turn it back on and see if you're still there. See if you're still with the song. Okay, and then gradually get longer and longer periods of time. And that'll be a good way to keep your time, uh, get better at, at keeping time is that sort of things. It's like training wheels, okay? When I, when I have the, the band hold grooving with me, then I'm, I've got my training wheels on, but every now and then, you gotta take them off and see if you've got that tempo still there, and then you come back and, you, and you've got it. That's a good way to, to, uh, um, to uh, practice that. Keith is asking a good question here. Can, you listen to I so can I listen to a song and learn the pattern and the time? Could anyone listen to a song to learn the pattern and the time? Yes. It's not rocket science. Some folks get really bent out of shape. My goodness, they write books, and people try and figure out these intricate rhythms of what's... I wouldn't want to do that, of what a strumming... what strumming pattern goes with this particular song. That's too much work. Too much work. Don't get so bent out of shape. It's not one... There's not one way to do it. You know, there's a thousand ways to do it, okay? So... So if I'm listening to a song, uh, let's say that's my song. Okay, what's the right strumming tempo? Or what's the right strumming pattern? 
It doesn't matter. Just get on the beat. One, two, three. Now I'm 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 following the basic uh, groove, the basic heartbeat of the groove. A good way to check yourself is to listen to the bass drum. If you ever, if you can kind of isolate as you're listening to a song, try and isolate different instruments. A lot of times the rhythm guitar, you're keying into the, what the hi-hat of the drummer is doing and what the bass drum of the, of the song is doing. So if you're confused on what to play, listen to what the bass drum is doing. So just sit there and listen. If he's going, gum, 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 great. That's all I needed to know. All I'm doing is hitting my chords when he's hitting his bass drum. And that's all the information that you need. Now I can add some other stuff around it. But it still has that, that dom, dom, that heartbeat going. And that's what you as a, a, a rhythm acoustic player can can chime into. If that's too complex for you, no problem at all. Just do, just, just follow the rhythm. You don't have to do all that other stuff. Just follow the rhythm. That sort of, that sort of a thing. Okay. Um, let's talk about adding some different things to it. One of the things I can do is dyna add some dynamics to your strumming. Okay, so how do I do this? I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but here's how I do it. Okay, when I'm playing, and we'll see if we can get a shot of this, Stephen, here, maybe on camera three. Um, when I'm normally playing, my pick is in a normal 90 degree angle, like it is, like it normally is. Okay, now as I get softer, what I'm going to do is slowly move to where I'm playing more on the side of my pick, like that. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start out strong. Okay, now I'm going to get softer. So I'm, I'm, I'm slanting my pick. So by now, I'm pretty much flat. And to where my pick is hitting the strings at almost this 45 degree angle. So I can still get the motion of strumming, I just don't get all of the volume of strumming. That's what, that's what folks have problems with is they start they oh I've got to go so I got to get softer when I strum and so they get weaker and that's not what you need so if I get weaker you know I grip my pick a little bit looser and I just get a smaller motion it doesn't work it just doesn't work it gets too floppy where's the tempo I'm not quite sure it's a little a little waffly now but if I if, as soon as I start doing the side pick thing There's no doubt where the tempo is at. But I'm still pretty quiet. Hey, it's time to get loud. So there's all these rhythms that are happening in there. Volume, that's how I do handle the volume thing. Another thing that I can do to add interest is you're hearing me do kind of mutes and pops and all kinds of things in my playing. So I'm not just going. I'm not just doing that. I've got a little bit of a accent. And every now and then I'll hit it, but I'll be muting down here. I'm just whacking the guitar. What am I doing? I'm, I'm striking strong. I'm immediately muting down here, and this hand over here is muting too. So I end up with this dead, dead strum. And what that you, you can use that as kind of a backbeat in a song. A lot of times that in music notation, that'll be notated as an X. You'll see a strumming pattern. There'll be a little X for a note head. That's what they're talking about there.
these little snaps and pops. Okay, Ron is asking, Ron Service, my good friend up in uh, Ancaster, Ontario, um, who took me to see Niagara Falls. Paulette and I are forever grateful for you taking us to see Niagara Falls, Ron. All right, Ron is asking, can you demonstrate a reggae strum versus a bossa nova strum versus a Latin strum? Well, that's a lot of strums. Okay, <laughs> well, here's the, here's the deal with a reggae. Okay, this is all I know about reggae. Okay, I'm not Bob Marley, but I faked it enough. You want to be... So I'm all this, I'm doing all this up stuff. So if you think of it, of my 16th notes, of my four 16th notes, I'm emphasizing the third and the fourth one. Now, sometimes it's a little bit more characteristic to do triads up high when I'm doing that. G, E minor, triad. This is nothing, not rocket science. C, and a D. Steve, you're a reggae guitar player. Oh, yes. Yeah, man. That's all I know. That's, that's all I know. And I faked my way through many a reggae songs doing just that. Okay? Bossa Nova. Okay? I don't, don't usually do strumming much on a bossa nova, but if I did, it would be more like... I wouldn't usually do it like that. I would usually, for me, I would do it. So you've got this that sort of a feel happening there. Now it, hap it, it, it helps to be familiar with the style. You're not sure how to do a bossa nova? Great, turn on some Antonio, Antonio Carlos Jobim and let that go for a couple hours, okay? And by then you'll just be, by the end of that, you'll just be swimming. <laughs> Just doing the groove, okay? Now, ask you about a Latin strum. A lot of times for, uh, it depends there. Now, Latin guys, oh man, they can go completely down that way and tell you the difference between 20 different types of Latin beats. Uh, I'm not that guy. Although, when we were in Peru, we did a lot of that. We did a lot of that stuff. It was very different. Um, interesting, when I was in Peru, and we were doing a lot of that stuff, and the, c the rhythms are so complex, and nothing is on beat one. It's just all that sort of stuff. Everybody's clapping on one and three. One, three, <laughs> one, three. There's all this stuff going on. And they're all just going one and three. It's a different thing. Um, all right. Let's, uh, I want to talk on one more thing, but let's give something away. I want to give away a uh, CD. This is a Van Larkin CD who's going to be at our uh, uh, fall fingerstyle retreat. So someone is about to win this. The winner of this is Thomas Ross. Congratulations, Thomas. Yay! Hey, Thomas, send me your information at Mighty Oak Mu Service at MightyOakMusic.com and we will send you out. This is Van's latest CD, um, uh, Cinder Moon, a great project. And uh, so, Thomas, send me your information, Service at Mighty Oak Music. Dot com. Gosh, a couple things we need to announce to you. Um, we haven't even really talked about this very much. We've got this um, toolkit that we're offering this month, um, which is a great little kit, a little uh, aluminum uh, case for it. And this is, I have these tools in my bag over there. When I need to do an adjustment, not really much to do on an acoustic, but on electric, you need to tighten a jack. You need to tighten the, uh, uh, the, the jacks on your pedals, something like that. 
you can either go out to the car and try and wade your way through a bunch of tools like I used to do, or you get these cute little, some company had a bright idea to make a tool that was all the different sets for basically all guitar things. So even tricky little jacks like for a Telecaster, this one will fit in for that. So it's made for guitars. And then it has all the little drill bits. I know on my Gibson 335, when you need to adjust these, um, the, the adjustable tailpiece down there, it is um, um, very helpful. You could be searching through hex wrenches forever to try and find the right little, you know, and just the time just the right one, you'll notice that it's the one that you lost. So um, I've done that. Anyway, this is a great little thing. We've got it in the store for like 44 bucks. Uh, if you're interested, we're going to have that up just till the end of the month. Um, this is a good sturdy one. fits in any guitar case, and it comes with all of the things that you need. It's like 17 different bits on it. Oh, and this little thing. I remember looking at this thinking, what in the world is that thing? That looks painful. It is just a little metal, metal ridgy thing. What that is for is for, on, on an electric, you ever tried to get off a volume knob without damaging anything? Okay, what are you going to use? Oh, a screwdriver? Well, uh, good luck with your finish on that one. This has got a little rubber end on the back so it doesn't hurt your finish. You pop that right underneath these knobs and that pops right up. There's also, uh, on Gibson's, the tail pieces, there's adjustable um, screws down here that you don't want to use a wrench on because that's going to bend everything up. This has a little ridge thing made especially for those. Cool little tool. Somebody was thinking when they, when they put that together. Anyway, this is great. If you're interested, check it out. Um, we are. We, are, we got a shipment in today. Um, the Guitar Gathering 2020. All right. I have got some good news, my, my fun friends since the last time we have spoken. Um, we had confirmed Joe Robinson, Australian Idol. Uh, uh, Australia's Got Talent win winner and brilliant fingerstyle player. So Joe was the first one to, to uh, lock in. And then this past week, we have locked in um, David Greer, which is the IBMA three-time bluegrass flat picking guitarist of the year. Um, I think he's won four Grammys. And he is uh, uh, a legendary, arguably, if not the top flat picking guy in the world. He's in the top five. Uh, and he's going to be with us. A rather odd fellow, but he's going to be great. <laughs> Look him up on YouTube. You'll see. He's odd, but he's great. Um, David Greer. So David Greer is locked in. He'll be teaching flat picking. Can't think of a better guy to do it, uh, whether he's on stage with Grammy winning artists or whether he's playing with in you know it's Steve Martin's bluegrass band um, I think he played for I think he played for Steve Martin's wedding I don't know he played for all kinds of stuff crazy stuff and he's a quiet guy and uh, he's gonna be teaching flat picking thrilled to have him that's but that's not all I y'all don't know the chaos that goes on behind the scenes to try and get people and how many no's I get from everybody I've gotten no's from some of the biggest in the business um, uh, and usually I got a yes for this one. And we are honored to say that Robin Ford has, has uh, told us to pencil in the date. And uh, so Robin Ford will be with us on June, I think it's the 11th, the Friday night that we, or the Thursday night that we had talked about that. So Robin Ford, who's been on stage with everybody from Miles Davis to Weather Report and the Rippingtons and all that sort of stuff. Uh, legendary blues guitarist. He is going to be here with us as well. I wish I could say that's the biggest fish I'm talking to, but it's not. I'm talking to others as well. But Robin landed. So Robin Ford, David Greer, Joe Robinson. We've got all kinds of workshops going on this year. We're expanding the workshops a little bit, adding more jam times. You guys had requested that, so we're putting, getting some more um, uh, uh, jam times in there as well. There's instruction on blues, a finger style, jazz, uh, theory, harmony. Um, and then, of course, all the night, wonderful night concerts and things like that. If you're interested in being a part of our uh, Guitar Gathering 2020, voted, uh, we won the Silver Award for the Acoustic Guitar Magazine's Best Guitar Camp. Um, if you're interested, we've got a little special. The guys have a little special going on. If you order by the 30th, which I think is what, Thursday? 
If you order by Thursday, we'll send you all of the fretboard workouts that we've done, all of them. So that's speed and agility, major scale mastery one and two, jazz chords, money chords, five hours worth of video content, more than that. Gosh, a lot more than that. And um, so if you're interested, we'll send all those for free if you register by October 30th. So um, if you're interested, check it out and register early and you'll get a whole bunch of good stuff. Okay, let's, get, let's give away one more thing. This is uh, from uh, one of our good friends. She was on the, on the show. She's from Germany. Judith Beckedorf. She was from Germany. You know Judith. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she is in a, blue, a German bluegrass band, which is a little odd in Germany. They are rather an odd thing, but they're fantastic. This is one of their CDs. Someone is going to win this. K9 Chaos. Barb, congratulations. You've just won a great CD. Yeah, and she autographed it as well. So congratulations um, on all that sort of stuff. All right, I think that's all the announcements that I need to do. I probably should play something else. Let me play one more thing for you. I did a wedding, another wedding, same wedding. No, this is the same wedding, different song, different song. So uh, let me... Uh, and drop D here on the old get fiddle. Hey, if you're ever interested, when you do do a drop D tuning, always go below the pitch because your uh, guitar, as you play, is going to want to go back to where it came from at that upper pitch. So I always tune it a little bit south so that as I play, it will stay in tune. Drop D is a fun tuning if you haven't messed around with that. Um, everything's normal. You just have this low bottom end. So all you have to do is just remember that this string is screwed up. Uh, you're two, you're two, two frets off, and uh, you'll be able to. That's right. So I was not familiar with this song, oddly enough, but it is actually a, uh, a Neil Young song. Harvest Moon.
There you go. A little bit of Harvest Moon to get us going there. Um, had a couple of questions I'm seeing fly by here. Um, okay, if you guys have any questions as I'm as we're we ha we're going to invite one of our good friends up, who's usually on your end of the chat, but uh, he is actually here for our our finger style retreat. So uh, Dom, why don't you go come on up and get set up? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, if you have a question while Dom is, is uh, getting set up, please uh, let let me know. Uh, Larry Sixstring is saying on that uh, Harvest Moon covered the harmonic twelfth fret parts. Yes, yes. There's a little lick in that. Are you okay? So it's a little bit of a tricky part. Okay. Da 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 da. Well, I couldn't play that. And then go, there's just too much real estate to go back and forth from. So I played the lick open. Okay, and that's how, we, that's how I got myself away from that signature lick, which is a great lick. I just couldn't go and reach down here at the same time. That sounded good. Yeah, oh, well, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, Good. Before uh, uh, Dom does his song, no, maybe we'll do your song first. We'll do your song first. It is good to have you here, Dom. I, I think it's good to be up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, humbled and honored for sure. I know that part. Dom has been one of our, our uh, guitar family for several years now. Yeah, a long time. I, uh, when I turned 60, I told my loving wife that I thought I wanted to learn how to play guitar for real mm -hmm. instead of just three chords when the chicks dug it at Washington's Crossing State Park when I was in college. There you go. Uh, so um, I did a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm over there. That's um, right. <laughs> just, and how did you I'm find I'm just it? one of his goofballs, that's all. <laughs> how did you run across our I guitar was on world? on the Gibson site. It might have been because uh, I saw there was a tuner for a tuner app. Oh, my goodness. And yes. It, it might have been the first tuner app I put on my phone. And I saw this learn and master guitar. It's like, well, I'd like to learn. I don't know about the master part. There but, you, you go. Know, and this Steve Krenz. And it's like, this is like one of the coolest guys I know ever. <laughs> I mean, really. It's good to know that our crazy little idea for the app actually had some... <laughs> Fruit, someone out there. Well, yeah. a lot of folks downloaded it. That yeah. was a great, when we put that app out, uh, this is way long ago, and um, um, we'd, we wanted to do a, a, an app that, that linked to our lessons, and uh, this is when, when the internet was young, when we were yes. all so young yes. in the internet. A lot younger. And um, that app, we pitched it to Gibson once we had done it. Oh, here's one thing for the app. I remember sitting, speaking of that app, I remember sitting in, a, in our conference room and all these computer guys and engineers around the table, and I'm trying to explain to them what a guitar tuner is and how it works. <laughs> and they're looking at it, and I'm, we're talking about frequencies, and it needs to go this pitch and this pitch and this pitch, and they weren't getting it. They just did not, could not figure out how to do it. And then finally I go, it's a ratio of the pitches with the frequencies and where we need to go. Once they got that, okay, then they got it. And then they knew we got it. But it was, they, I remember that everybody was just, and I'm, I'm going, it's a, it's a guitar tuner. It can't be that hard. Mm. It cannot be that hard. And no. finally, once we did that, then they, you know, they, they probably programmed it in their sleep once they knew what we were looking for. Uh, and we did that app. We pitched it to Gibson. Gibson um, liked the, um, like the app because that was just about the time that Fender was coming out with their app, and so never to be outdone by Fender. Gibson put their <laughs> no, no, Gibson no. put their app out there, and uh, we released it, and it was a very exciting weekend. Uh, that app went, cycled its way up that weekend, and eventually we got up to number ten on the music apps, and eight, and six, and four, 
and two and one. And for a few glorious moments there, we were the number one downloaded music app in the world on Apple. And then it popped up into, for a few hours, the 10th, we were on the front page of Apple. It was the 10th top 10 downloaded app in the world for that weekend. Of all apps, not just music apps, of all apps. We won the Billboard Music App Branding Award that year. All kinds of crazy things happened from that silly little app, which now everybody has. It and did it's a, exactly what it needed to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And so that, I'm, I'm glad that you have made, uh, made good use of that. Yeah. Um, I notice you are playing a beautiful Loudon guitar. I am. This, and I noticed on the back of it, this is the Pierre Ben Susan model, which he was on our show, one of the most brilliant fingerstyle players I've ever had the opportunity to sit I, next to. I didn't see that. He was on the show. Um, <laughs> many 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 years ago just happened to be coming through town and he is known for playing Loudons and he is a brilliant brilliant player so I know that's a great sounding guitar what are you gonna play for us I'm gonna do a, an original I wrote a few years ago called rising mm -hmm. at least I'm going to try to I don't know we're um, kind of putting you on the spot nah, but it's okay yeah I mean, um, yeah uh, Sharon has a 0017 smoke mm-hmm and it's one of those guitars that everyone who has ever played it mm -hmm. has been inspired to do something. Yeah. And I was just sitting there one night just going, you know, I just did like. Mm -hmm. I love that stuff. It's yeah. like, you know, my mud, my, my boots are in the mud. Mm -hmm. God knows what's coming out of them. Mm -hmm. You know, and she says, oh, what's that? I said, I have no idea. Well, good. And a couple of days later, she says, what's that? And I said, oh, I don't know. It's the same thing, but. I hear the word rising. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Well, play so it for I us. just from there it just one day it just as you know sometimes they just pour out. Yeah, you yeah. Know, for better for worse, and that was the song, and it's, it's called Rising. It's Good. it's not as you always say it's not rocket science in the song. <laughs> Anyone can play this song. <laughs> you know, Good, so, but um, we'll give it a try. Wonderful. And uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right.
like no one cared Been betrayed, laughed and scared Felt like I was as thin as hair Feeling free, I did not dare No, no, no No, no, no Rising In the morning Hope flows and love is now Saving me All my fears Seem Unusually quiet Peace fills where fear Used to be I'm looking all Around Those things nowhere To be found So love Just keep on pouring Oh, I say love, just keep on pouring Soft and sweet, soft and sweet Rising Rising Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah! Wonderful. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Steve, <laughs> thank you very yeah. much. Yeah! Very How now, fun. Steve said if I did this, I won, I won this guitar. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You may need to talk to George Groon about that. May. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we need to land this ship. Uh, it's fun. You know, I love uh, I love making music, you know. Um, all right. Uh, let's uh, finish up. Hey, we are usually when it's around conference time. I don't like to have live lessons because I'm just too stinking tired. But we it just didn't work out that way this time. So we are having a live lesson next week with Ian Ethan Case, um, who is nice. going to be with us at our Fingerstyle Retreat. Nice. Nice. And he is going to be, he leaves right after he does our concert. Y'all don't even know about this. He leaves right after the concert on Friday night and drives five hours to St. Louis and then drives back because uh, he's got an event in St. Louis and then he'll drive back on Monday and he'll be with us Tuesday night. So here with live lesson, because he's got to pick up a guitar that's here at Groon. So he said, <laughs> I said, yeah, well, yeah. we'll have you on the show. So it'd be great. One of the most creative people that I have ever met. He just oozes creativity. And uh, so Ian Ethan Case is going to be with us next week. And, um, and then, if that wasn't enough, the week after that, um, um, I, uh, Bill Pyburn from Fingersaw Magazine um, contacted me and let me know that um, um, the Gregorian brothers are going to be in town, which is a classical guitar duet. We haven't much, haven't had much classical guitar on the show. They're doing a concert Tuesday night, November 12th, so they will be with us on Monday night. So we will have a special Monday, November 11th edition with, I'm very excited, the Gregorian, I know I'm pronoun not pronouncing that right, Gregorian brothers and uh, so check them out we got a link on them on that the guys are putting up there yes check them out they're fantastic i just think i play guitar next to these guys no these guys are amazing so we have got some crazy great uh, live lessons still coming and we've got our finger shower retreat it's going to be a great week of music wait. coming up um we're psyched look at this i'm we're so like glad that and you were with us we last. Can't even sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and you were with us last year. Yeah, I, I've been here for every one you've had. Yeah. And yeah. last year, I looked at you, and I, you had put the information up on. We the, had just announced the TV. it. You had made the, the announcement while John Knowles was speaking. Yeah. So sorry, John. No disrespect. I love you. However, I immediately went to my phone and signed up, and I looked over at you, and I went. 
Yeah. And you came back and you went, you're number one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up bringing all these people with me. Yes, we've got seven so. or eight wonderful folks that you we need to we need to give you a commission or something. I don't know <laughs> how that works. Just more like guitar. There you go. <laughs> um, hey, if you're interested in um, the toolkit thing. Um, check that out because that's going to be ending at the end of the month. And if you're interested in being a part of the summer conference, while we've got that special on, um, order before midnight on th Thursday or whatever, okay, for the summer conference with Robin Ford and David Greer, Joe Robinson, and uh, a lot of great fun. So if you're interested, check it out at uh, guitargathering2020.com. If you want to know about the Fingerstyle Retreat, I'm not going to tell you, but I do know who we booked for next year. I know. T I already know too. Oh, you can't know. I've never. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have no idea. All right. I was going, well, man. Sharon if you knows. know, that's the Sharon knows everything, so um, she won't so, tell me. <laughs> um, yes, we are going to announce uh, who we're going to have for Things Our Retreat at the retreat, but I we have already booked them, and it is going to be great, crazy great. So, all right. Um, we are done. Keep up the great work in your learning. You know, it doesn't matter if you're Pierre Ben Susan on the back of his guitar or whether you're just an average guy trying to learn how to play better. Okay? Music can have a very rewarding part of who you are in your life. It's not about being the best. It's not a, if, you know, I, I, I appreciate American Idol as much as the next guy, but it's not about that. It's not about that at all. Um, just m make music. Help some people along the way, and uh, you will be blessed for it. So keep up the great work in your own learning. We will see you guys next week with Ian, Ethan, Kay.